How big is a Minecraft block? If you ask most people, the answer is pretty simple. According to the game's developers, one block is one meter by one meter by one meter. Nice and simple. Your character stands at 1.8 blocks, which translate to 6 feet 2 inches, which is a little on the tall side, but totally makes sense. So, yeah, if you take the developer's word for it, one meter blocks sounds totally right. Only, there's one problem. See, I'm a man of science. I'm not the type of guy to just take someone's word for it, because people they can lie to you. People can deceive. They can make mistakes. They can make stuff up for the sake of convenience. But luckily, I don't need to take someone's word for it because I have math. Irrefutable, undisputable math. Please don't click off. I promise this isn't going to be as boring as it sounds. Today, I find out how big one Minecraft block actually is. Richard, hit that intro. Now, I'll admit, calculating something like this won't be easy. The problem is, in order to effectively convert between two units, like, say, blocks and meters, we need some point of comparison. But in Minecraft, every single thing is blocks. There's literally nothing in this world that we can use as a point of reference if we don't know how big a block is, right? Well, I wouldn't be so sure, my friend. It turns out that calculating the length of a single block in Minecraft is as easy as falling down. Oh. I've solved it. There is one thing that the Minecraft world and our own have in common. Gravity. Gravity is a fundamental force of the universe that works exactly the same no matter where you are. So, if we can understand how things fall in the Minecraft world, that will be our key, our constant, that will allow us to uncover the truth of this blocky world. Here on Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. What that means is that for every second you fall, you fall 9.8 meters per second faster than you were a second ago. Now, we could just assume that the Minecraft world has the same gravity as Earth, drop something, time how long it takes to fall, and we'd have our answer. Oh, 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 you sweet, innocent, naive little child. If only it were that easy. No, there are two main reasons why that wouldn't work. First of all, the gravity of the Minecraft world may very well be completely different from Earth, and we have no way of measuring that without knowing how big a block is. But even if we could, Minecraft blocks don't really accelerate like a normal falling object. I mean, they do technically accelerate, but only for a short distance, at which point they fall at a constant speed, which would mess up any of our measurements. But where you see a problem, I see our solution. When something is falling at a constant speed, we call that its terminal velocity. Basically, terminal velocity is the speed at which something falls where the force of gravity pulling it down is equal to the force of air resistance pushing it back up. And luckily for us, terminal velocity is something that we can very easily calculate. Well, well, not, not that easy. You'll see. The equation to find terminal velocity looks like this. I know, I know, there's a lot of letters in here. Some of you are having flashbacks to 11th grade physics right now, but it's actually not that scary. I'll go through each term one by one so we can all understand the pieces we're looking for, and then we'll use that to find our block length. Let's start over here with our first term. Two. Two, two, that, that's it, just two. See, I told you, math is easy. 
M stands for the mass of the falling object, basically just how heavy it is in fancy metric terms. G represents the acceleration due to gravity. On Earth, it's 9.8 meters per second squared, but in Minecraft, it might be different. This goofy looking symbol down here, that's like, like a P if it had my posture, that stands for the density of the air you're falling through. A is the downward facing area of the falling object. For a cube, that's super easy. It's just the area of the bottom side of the cube. And lastly, CD stands for the coefficient of drag, which takes into account the aerodynamics of the object. Just plug all those numbers into this equation and you'll get the terminal velocity of your falling object. The math itself might get complicated, but let's be real. If you're not using a calculator for this, then you're already screwing up. So all we need to do to find the length of a single block is to start plugging in all the stuff that we do know and then solve for what we don't know. To start, we know that any block affected by gravity, like say sand, has a terminal velocity of 40 blocks per second. However, in order for this to work, we need that speed in terms of meters per second. And now, don't freak out, don't freak out. I can see Richard already sweating bullets over there. It's gonna be okay, but we're gonna need to use some algebra. I know, I know, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person, I get it. We don't know how many meters is equivalent to one block. And in algebra, when you don't know something, you just throw an X in there. That's all that means. Basically, when you see an X, it means we have no idea what that is yet. So, if we say that one block is equal to x meters, we're just saying that we don't know how many meters one block is yet, but we're gonna figure it out. If one block truly is one meter long, then x should come out to be equal to one. And if it's not equal to one, then the people at Mojang are filthy little liars, and you've been tricked by their silver tongues, their false prophecies. Or maybe they just made it up. It's probably, they probably just picked one because it's nice. So if we're saying that one block is equal to X meters, then anytime you see the word block, just replace it with X meters. So our terminal velocity of 40 blocks per second turns into 40 X meters per second. And look, just like that, we're already done with one side of our equation. I'll admit the other half is, it's uh, I mean, it's a lot worse. Like you, honestly, you have no, it's about to get wild up in here. Let's start with the simplest of terms, starting with two. And we're done! The coefficient of drag can be a little confusing, but basically it's determined by the shape of the falling object. I'll be honest, I have absolutely no idea how you calculate this, but there are loads of tables online where you can just look it up. For a cube falling face first, the coefficient is 1.05, so we can just plug that in and move on. Working backwards, A is the area of the falling object that's pushing against the air. Again, for a cube, that's really easy. It's just this bottom square. We know that each side of the square is one block length long, which means that we can replace it with X meters. To find the area of the square, you just multiply the two side lengths together. So X times X or X squared, that's our area. For the density of air, we really have no idea what the atmosphere of the Minecraft world is like. Our atmosphere has a density of 1.293 kilograms per meter cubed, and I'm just gonna assume that the Minecraft world is the same. Look, the math is about to get really, really bad. Like, it's gonna get real bad. Just let me have this one. Just this one. I've done it up. So that's the bottom all set. Moving up to the top, this M stands for the mass of our sand block. Now, Obviously, we have no way of weighing this block in-game, but we know that sand typically has a density of 1,500 kilograms per meter cubed. Density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, so if we want to find the mass of this block, then we need to multiply the density by the volume. The volume of this cube is equal to one side length raised to the third power, or in other words, cubed. Get it? Get it? Do you get it? Because it, because it's, yeah, you get it. You get it. We all know. We know what it's about. Yeah, we know. It's good. Because it's a cube. One side of this block is one block length long, which is equal to x meters. So the volume of one block of sand is x cubed meters cubed. 
So that means that the mass of one block of sand is equal to 1,500 times x cubed kilograms. And now all that's left is to find G. I wish I could say we're almost done, but I would never lie to you, it's about to get bad. I fear no equation, but that, that one scares me. Now, I could try to find this experimentally by dropping blocks from various heights and timing them. Look, I don't want to bore you with the details, but I tried it and it doesn't work with our equation. In the game, the gravity and the terminal velocity don't make sense together when you do the math. So instead, we need to calculate what the gravity of the Minecraft world should be, in theory. To do that, I'm sorry, but we are going to have to put all this to one side for now and bust out another equation. In order to calculate the gravity on any given planet, we need to use this equation. The little g is the acceleration due to gravity, that's the thing we're looking for. Big G is what's called the gravitational constant, and it's always, always, no matter where you are in the universe or the multiverse, equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. This is the constant that I dramatically referred to earlier. I mean, I may have oversold how cool it is. It's a, it's, it's just a, it's just a number. It's that, uh. So we can just throw that in our equation for G. Next, we need the mass of the planet whose gravity we're trying to calculate. So in this case, we need to find the mass of the entire Minecraft world. This is actually not that hard to figure out, but it takes a long time to explain, so I'll do my best to go through it as quickly as possible, but I'll leave a more detailed explanation in the comments for those curious. All right, here goes. The Minecraft world is an average of 134 blocks from bedrock to ground level. Of these layers, an average of 3 are made of bedrock, 66 are deep slate, 44 are stone, and 5 are dirt. If we look up the real world densities for all these materials, taking into account the fact that about 20% of these stone and deep slate layers are caves, then we can find the density of the Minecraft world to be an average of 2,066.357 kilograms per meters cubed. There will be some areas that are more dense and some that are less dense, but in the end, the density is so small compared to the surface area of the Minecraft world that we could be off by several orders of magnitude here, and the difference in the final result would be virtually imperceptible. A typical Minecraft world is 60 million blocks from border to border, meaning it has a volume of 60 million times 60 million times 134 blocks. Throw some X's in there to convert to meters, multiply that by the density from before, and we have the mass of the entire Minecraft world. Ha ha ha! You thought you could hide the truth from me, Mojang? You thought your secret was safe behind these walls of math? You thought we were too stupid to crack your code? Dude, I'm not even done. This last term, r, is the radius of how far away you are from the center of mass of the body. Basically, it's how big the planet is. Now, for all intents and purposes, the Minecraft world seems to be perfectly flat, unlike real world planets, which are spherical. This is straight up impossible. See, gravity always points towards the center of mass of an object. So on a sphere, that's always straight down, perpendicular to the surface. On a flat plane though, gravity would only point down if you were standing in the direct center of the plane. And if you moved away from that point, not only would gravity seem to weaken since you're getting further and further away from the center of mass, but gravity would also seem to shift, always pointing back towards the center. So while you may technically be walking across a flat surface, it would feel like walking on the inside of a bowl. In Minecraft, this clearly isn't the case. Gravity is the exact same no matter where you are in the world, meaning it has to be spherical. So to account for this, let's assume that a Minecraft world is actually a sphere with the same surface area as the flat version. So all we're changing is the shape. Now, the existence of the void under the world may seem to disprove this assumption. If it were a sphere, then you could, at least in theory, tunnel straight down to the other side of the planet. 
That is, of course, unless Minecraft takes place on a hollow Earth. Just a thin shell around an empty center, which is technically, theoretically, possible in real life, though very, very unlikely. And if the Minecraft world truly was hollow, then it wouldn't have a molten and solid iron core at its center like Earth does, which would mean that it doesn't have magnetic fields to protect against solar radiation, and the atmosphere would have been blown away, making life on this planet impossible. I mean, but this is also a world where you can magically teleport to alternate dimensions, and I've come too far to let something as trifling as suffocation stop me now. Anyway, a Minecraft world has a surface area of 60 million times x squared. The surface area of a sphere is found using this formula, and since we're interested in finding the radius, we can rearrange it like this, plug in our surface area here, and we get this for the radius of the Minecraft world. So we plug that into our equation for g, plug g into this whole equation for our terminal velocity from before, and just like that, we have all the pieces in place. Now, all we have to do is solve for x in this monster of an equation, and we will have the answer to the question that has plagued scientists the world over for I don't know, probably the last 16 minutes, I'm guessing. I'll admit, it won't be easy. This equation is insanely complex, way more intricate and challenging than any I've encountered in all my years as an engineer. But I'm not about to give up just yet. Get your pencils ready, kids, because it's time to do some math. I'm just kidding, it's 2023, we're using a calculator. <laughs> what, you think I own a pencil? Wolfram Alpha is a super sophisticated calculator. It'll solve basically whatever equation you throw in it. You're welcome to any STEM students out there. So all I have to do is type all of this out, hit enter, and change the world. Folks, I'm glad to announce that the lies are finally over. One block in Minecraft is not equal to one meter. According to the math, the irrefutable, undisputable math, one block in Minecraft is equal to 345.5 nanometers. That is nearly 200 times smaller than the smallest grain of sand. Does it make sense? Absolutely not, but the numbers don't lie. With that terminal velocity, there is no other scale that makes sense. Like it or not, this is the truth. When they say Minecraft is a sandbox game, they meant it literally. Look, I know this probably wasn't the answer you were hoping for. I can hear your comments already trying to nitpick my methods, but I promise I used facts and scientifically backed methods wherever I could. I made very few assumptions. I don't know what else I could. With the density of air, we really have no idea what the atmosphere of the Minecraft world is. I'm just gonna assume that the Minecraft world wouldn't have a molten and solid iron core at its center. Atmosphere would have been blown away. Just let me have this one. Oh no. If we want to get scientific here, and you know that I do, I did assume that the Minecraft world could have an atmosphere even if it was totally hollow, but that's not actually true. If the Minecraft world has no center, then it has no atmosphere. And if the Minecraft world has no atmosphere, then the air density would drop to zero. That would break our equation because you can't divide something by zero, but technically speaking, even in the vacuum of space, there is some air density, no matter how small. So just in the name of good science, what if we did assume that the Minecraft world's atmosphere was destroyed by solar winds, like it would be in real life, and threw a very small number in for the air density, as close to zero as we could reasonably get. Something on the order of 10 to the minus 40. That's about as close to no atmosphere as you can get. If we swap that in for our air density and resolve for x, then we would find that a Minecraft block is equal to... No. No, 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 that, that can't be, no, but that, that would mean, that would mean that they never, that would mean that I was the liar in a world 
with no atmosphere. Then according to the math, the irrefutable, undisputable math, one block in Minecraft is equal to exactly one meter. This video was brought to you by my amazing patrons, including Alakazam, Ethan Furlano, and Sherry and Mark. You all get straight A's. What can I say? I'm a sucker for bribes.